Good morning, church. Good morning, Palmacy United Methodist Church. Welcome to church this morning. Um, uh, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your week to be here with us today. Um, for those of you online, thank you so much for taking time out of your week if you're live or if it's in the future. Again, no matter what time it is, your time is valuable and any time that we can actually join together, many or few, weird times or not, um, it's awesome when we can actually be together and join in worship um, together and share that experience. Um, uh, for those of you that are here, thank you for jumping through the hoops. Thank you for continuing to help us with the process of keeping everybody safe as we continue to tread these waters. And hopefully we see, we see the light at the end of the tunnel and it gets closer. Um, thank you for, for, for going through the screenings and everything and for wearing the mask um, and for continuing to not sing and humming along. Um, it's heartbreaking, but we all, I think at this point, we understand what it, you know, the things we have to do to try to keep each other safe and do our best. Um, for those of you online, by all means, sing along. Uh, we're going to put the words up on the screen. Um, so give it your all. Um, for those of you online, if you can click the link in the description and fill out the online connection card um, and prayer requests. That way we can know that, uh, that you were here um, digitally. Um, or in the future, you know, whatever. Um, we want to make sure that we're a part of your life, even though we don't get to see you face-to-face -face at this moment. Um, you're still very important to us, and we want to be an important part of your life. Um, next Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday. I don't know if anybody is aware of that fact. Um, it's very nice to be a, a Tampa Bay citizen. <laughs> um, so each year we, uh, we ask everybody to... Uh, to donate soup, crackers, and other canned food items to stock our food pantry. Um, so if you wouldn't mind next Sunday when you come to church, bring those in so we can continue to be that, have that ministry here in South Tampa for people who need it. Um, if you can't make it, we are going to have the bins here at the church starting tomorrow. So if you can't make it next week or if you're online or something and you want to stop by and be a, be a part of that ministry and be a part of that process of donating canned goods, um, for our Super Bowl Sunday uh, donation drive, you can stop anytime this week and drop them off in the bins um, and help us out that way and help the community out that way. Um, again, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us in worship. We appreciate you. And uh, would you please join us in worship?
salvation is here. Salvation is here and it lives in me. Salvation is here. Salvation that died just to set me free. Salvation is here. Salvation is here and it lives in me. Salvation is here. No. 
church. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for the light that's always there that we're allowed to step into. Thank you that you made the sacrifice so that no matter what we go through, no matter what this world tries to throw on our backs, it's not our burden to bear alone. It's not easy, and you didn't say that it was going to be easy, but you said that you would always be there, and you are always there. (sighs) You show up for this community of faith. Thank you for that, God. Thank you for this community of faith. Thank you for this congregation. Thank you for South Tampa. (sighs) Thank you for the opportunity to gather and worship and share the reverence and the experience of you. Thank you that In this crazy time of separation and division, this still can happen. And you're ensuring it and you're making sure and you're inspiring the things that need to happen so that this can happen. You show up and you continue to make ways for us to know that you show up. God, I ask you to be with people who are struggling right now. Whether it's health, medical, medical related things, COVID or otherwise, the world didn't stop turning because COVID happened. There are all sorts of maladies and things that are going to attempt to break people. And you still have their back. Be with those people. Some of those people are very, very close to this church and very special. And some of those people aren't. They're people we don't even know. But you know them and you know what they need. You know how it hurts to be going through what they're going through. Be with those who are dealing with things 
mentally, psychologically, financially, the things that maybe sometimes we hide or the things that we don't allow out and allow to be vulnerable and raw to receive healing. You know about it. You know it's in there. You know, you know what it needs. You made us. You know what we're susceptible to. God, I ask today that you use Pastor Bruce. I ask that you speak through him. Allow his voice to be your voice in our lives. To impart wisdom and power and grace and peace that we can take into this next week, into these crazy times. As his word continues to unfold as it will forever until you deem it not to. Thank you that you are God. Thank you that you are always here. Thank you for your continued grace and support and peace in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, church, I just want to take another opportunity. I do this every Sunday, but it is we, this church would not be able to be the ministry that it is in South Tampa if it was not for your continued support and your continued faithfulness, especially through this crazy time where we had to do all sorts of satellite worship and doing things on online. And we are, we're continuing to do those things. And again, your, your continued faithfulness and giving and supporting um, is why we can do that. It's what, it, what keeps the, 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 the wheels spinning and the, the, the plates going. Um, you can continue to give um, through the app or by texting. Um, if you do have an envelope and you want to give that way, if you have a check or anything, there is a plate here and you can drop it on your way out. Um, but again, church, thank you so much for continuing to support this ministry, to support our, this church's mission here in South Tampa. So thank you. Would you continue worshiping with us? Bach are leading them in worship beginning at 1030 and then they stream the sermon in at 11. We also want to uh, welcome in our contemporary service if they are with us uh, Tim I'm waiting for the thumbs up that Tim always gives me sorry for there we go. Uh, welcome uh, contemporary group thank you so much for being with us this morning we appreciate your, uh, your uh, commitment to our church and your faithfulness to worship uh, also, we give thanks to uh, to Tony and uh, and um, and Jake and Justin for leading worship over there. One of the things that our church uh, supports and has supported for years is the United Methodist Children's Home up in Enterprise, Florida, the Florida Com the churches of the Florida Conference um, um, uh, support this with their with their giving. And every fifth Sunday of the month, there are four of them in the year, as you know. We take up a special op offering for the uh, United Methodist Children's Home. And uh, today, in order to uh, just announce that it is the, the first fifth Sunday of the month, and uh, just to highlight the fact that this is one of our, the things that we, that we support with our giving, we want to show uh, just a short video uh, for everyone to see uh, here in the, uh, the sanctuary, the Fellowship Hall, Port Tampa, and also you at home. So, Tim, let's, uh, let's show that that video now. My name is Katwana McTire, President and CEO of the Florida United Methodist Children's Home. COVID-19 has impacted the country in a major way. Everything from uh, social interaction to uh, how we plan events with our families to um, how we even worship. But where there's uh, tremendous clarity is 
our mission and what we do, because what we do can't stop. Susan is a 17-year-old female um, who's been with us multiple times. Here recently, I had an opportunity to speak with her and got to hear from her uh, a bit of excitement, but at the same time, um, a bit of apprehensiveness in that uh, didn't know what to expect. Will the home be there for her? What gives me hope for Susan is that those conversations can continue. They don't stop once she leaves our residential campus. And we're only able to do that uh, by the staff that we have and by the donors that support that. We've also seen a downtick in donations uh, during this time. Um, we will continue the path. We will continue to serve. That's not going to change. But we could not do it without that support of uh, the churches and their congregations. And so thank you um, for allowing that to happen and for maintaining that relationship. This is our, our children's home, uh, United Methodist Children's Home of the Florida Conference, uh, a, a ministry that we, that we support and have supported for years, decades. So I hope that uh, uh, in your giving, uh, your normal giving, that you will find it in your heart to, to also give towards the, uh, towards the United Methodist Children's Home. I believe there are envelopes in all of the worship bulletins. Um, uh, if they're not, we uh, special envelopes for the uh, a children's home. If they're not, uh, we have uh, some uh, on, on your way out. We continue this morning in the, the Gospel of Mark. Um, now, I ventured out of the first chapter and into just uh, into the edges, tiptoeing into the second chapter. I believe uh, uh, next week, Pastor uh, I don't believe he is going to preach next week, uh, Lord willing. Uh, Pastor Justin's going to preach next week. And I believe you're going back to the first chapter. Okay, he's going back to the first chapter. So, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, this morning we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, wade into the edge of chapter 2. Hear the word of the Lord uh, as given to us in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came, uh, bringing, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of these men. Since they could not get to him, uh, get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and, and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this, that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and take your mat and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of all of them. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I think this is one of the most intriguing and interesting stories in the, uh, in the New Testament. Matthew and Luke record this story as well. Jesus, Peter, and Andrew, James, and John um, had just recently returned to Capernaum after traveling through Galilee. Jesus had been preaching in the synagogues and casting out demons, Mark says. 
As usual, Mark leaves out a few de details about this, but it appears that Jesus had a home in Capernaum, at least for a little while, and the people, that, uh, the people heard that he was at home and gathered there in a large crowd to hear him preach and teach and to be healed. On this particular day, um, the crowd was so large, uh, inside Jesus' house, not one person, not one more person could squeeze through the door. Uh, try entertaining like that. Um, have enough snacks and drinks for people to, who there's just not enough any more room for anyone to squeeze through the door. And Mark says some people, some men, uh, Mark calls them, organized their compassion and their efforts to bring a paralyzed man who couldn't get there on his own to Jesus. And four of the strongest of this group uh, carried the man, uh, each, uh, one on each corner. They carried the man to Jesus' house. But because, the crowd, because of the crowd, there was no possible way to get this man to Jesus by conventional means, which would have been through the door. Uh, so they carried the man to the roof of the house. Now, they wouldn't have needed a ladder like they would, you would on our homes and our houses to get to the roof of the house. Uh, first century Middle Eastern homes would have had an, a stairway that leads uh, up to the roof on the outside of the house, up one side of, of one of the walls. Uh, so they carried the man uh, uh, to the roof uh, 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 this way. Now, uh, um, they didn't need a ladder. It was hard enough, however, to get the man up, up, uh, up those steps. Have you ever tried carrying a, a man up steps? Um, um, it was hard enough to get up there, but they didn't need a ladder. Um, but homes in those days, the, the roofs were made uh, so that they, they could be used as a, as a terrace or a lanai or even an upper room. Remember in the book of Acts, Simon was uh, visiting his friend uh, ta uh, Simon the Tanner. Uh, and that's where he received the vision to go down to the house of Cornelius. And Peter was staying uh, with, with Simon. Uh, Simon uh, hide tanning must have been a lucrative business in those days because Simon's house was on the, on the seashore. And about noon, remember what it said, Peter went up to the roof to pray. That's where he went up, sort of like a terrace or a lanai. He went up there to pray, but instead he fell, as uh, fell asleep. The sun and the sea air, uh, they, they, that, has, uh, that has that effect on you. Well, the house Jesus was living in, in Capernaum, at the time, probably had a stairway on the outside of the house that led to the roof. Carrying the paralyzed man up the stairway to the roof by way of the stairs uh, would have been difficult, but they wouldn't have needed a ladder. But the tenacity of this group is highlighted when, when they make an opening in the roof, an opening large enough, large enough uh, to lower a man down to Jesus on the first floor. Again, I would love more detail here, Mark, um, uh, but I imagine that, that they had to, to uh, have some kind of rope or something to make a sling or a cradle sturdy enough to lower this very fragile and immobile man down to Jesus. I'm wondering, did they go back home and get rope? Uh, uh, to, uh, uh, does everybody keep that kind of stuff on their roof uh, back then? Uh, Capernaum was, by the, was close to the sea, so maybe the, the house had dock lines and fishing nets stored on the roof uh, uh, necessary to, to make some kind of a, a sling to lower the man uh, uh, in an opening in the roof down to the main floor. Luke says, Luke says they lowered the man through the tiles. Uh, that's Luke's uh, uh, version of the story. They lowered the man through the tiles, which means they had to remove the tiles, first of all. Mark says they dug through the roof. And again, I'm thinking, where did they get the tools uh, to either take tiles off the roof or dig through a roof uh, uh, made of some sort of cementitious material or baked clay material? Um, um, and, and you know stuff had to be falling down on people below. But we're amazed when we consider the extraordinary lengths that these people went uh, in order to get this man in the presence of Jesus. Now, I'm not sure whether Mark intends this, this group, uh, this, uh, he calls them some people, this group to, to represent the church, but it sure looks like a good model for the church to me. 
not just one, not just four, not sure how many in the group of some people, as Mark calls them, uh, but they were all moved with compassion to come to this poor man's aid. They had witnessed the healing power of Jesus. Maybe one or some of them had been healed by, by Jesus themselves, and they were convinced that if they could get this man to Jesus, Jesus would heal him too. And they didn't let anything get in their way. They were organized. They were singularly focused. They pooled their resources together, used their ingenuity and dogged determination to get this man in the presence of Jesus. And you know, that's what we're called to do, by the way. And notice, notice uh, these people uh, didn't say, well, uh, we don't want to make a spectacle of ourselves and, uh, or do something that would, that would bring embarrassment on the church, so let's just, uh, let's just uh, come back another day when it's not crowded. They didn't say, you know, we don't want to offend anybody with our, with our ideas or our beliefs, so let's just wait until we can catch Jesus when he's by himself, when he's alone. They didn't even add their name to a wait list to be admitted later, and they certainly didn't say, well, it's just not meant to be. You know, I think Jesus had these people in mind when he, when he stood with his disciples before he ascended into heaven uh, and, and said to, to go make disciples. Be as determined at, at winning souls for Christ, people for Christ, as that group who tore a hole in my roof uh, so, they could, so that one man could receive salvation. And when the man was lowered down into the crowd, into the living room, uh, Jesus took note of the faith of this group and said with the tenderness of, of a mother's warm embrace or a father's warm embrace, son, son or child, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. Wait a minute, Jesus, that's not why we busted our tails to bring this man to you. Can't you see this man has no use of his arms and legs and depends on, on others to care for him, uh, uh, care for his every need, and you say your sins are forgiven? And there are other people there that day questioning Jesus' judgment and his ill-advised statement. Mark and Matthew calls, calls them scribes, doesn't quantify them. But Luke says in his story, when he tells this story, he says there were Pharisees and teachers of the law, scribes, sitting in Jesus' living room that day, and they had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and even from the church headquarters in Jerusalem. No wonder the place was crowded. No wonder the place was crowded beyond fire marshal capacity. The scribes and the Pharisees were taking all of the seats, and the poor people who needed Jesus couldn't get in. And the scribes and the Pharisees were there. They weren't there to lend support and encouragement to Jesus. They were more like spies uh, because, uh, because his name had become uh, widely known throughout the region. And when they heard Jesus say, Son, your sins are forgiven. All sorts of alarms and bells and whistles began to go off in their heads and in their minds. Who does this guy think he is? They thought to themselves. He can't take away sins. God alone takes away sin. And the sacrificial system that we have set up in Jerusalem, where these people make pilgr pilgrimage to the temple at least once a year, pay a high exchange rate for temple currency, buy the overpriced temple animal to be sacrificed by one of the temple priests so their sins can be absolved. But we really got a good deal on an annual pass, and they can come any time during the year and sacrifice as many times as they want. Not really, I just made that part up. The annual pass part. The rest is true. He can't take away sin. God alone takes away sin. Why, he's, he's blaspheming. He's being irreverent and disrespecting God. And the punishment for, for blaspheming, uh, God, by the way, under their system was death. They didn't have the courage to say it out loud, but they were thinking these things in their minds and in their hearts. But Jesus knew what they were thinking. And Jesus confronts the scribes and the Pharisees with their own thoughts and says, why are you thinking these things? 
Mark uses these things to indicate their biased reasoning. Matthew, when he tells the story, says, why do you entertain evil thoughts in your heart? Which shows something about their character. These things, these evil thoughts, these prejudgments about Jesus because they were afraid they would lose their power with, over the people. These things festered up into hatred and a desire to destroy Jesus. Their minds were made up and their hearts were hardened. And when Jesus healed the man with his word and said, get up and take your mat uh, and, uh, that the men lowered you on and go home, it didn't change at all. The, Jesus' first act of forgiving the man's sins, uh, it was invisible and no one saw the sins that were, that were piled up high in this man's burdened soul. Only Jesus saw them. And no one saw the sins vanish into the deep sea of God's forgetfulness to be seen no more. But the second act, the second act of restoring the man's body to full health and strength is instantly visible for all of the crowd to see. They saw a man with atrophied arms and legs stand up and pick up his mat and walk, walk out of the crowded room. And the visible act of healing the man verifies for everyone in the room to see that Jesus does have the authority on earth to forgive sin. And Mark says, this amazed everyone. And they praised God. But there were two groups of people and two different responses. Mark says everyone, but is referring to the common people sitting there. The people who didn't work for the temple in Jerusalem, they were amazed, and their response was to praise God and worship God. But the scribes and the Pharisees, their hearts were hardened, and this was the beginning of their plot to destroy Jesus. And the charge at his trial, remember, the charge at his trial before, before the high priest was blasphemy. Blasphemy, claiming he was God. So Mark is making his case that Jesus is the Son of God. And already here at the beginning of the gospel, Mark is calling for a response and a decision to follow him. Here's the proof. Here's the proof, Mark says. How, how will you respond? Like the scribes and the Pharisees or like the common people who praise God? How will you respond? But what are these things that we allow to, to ruminate in our hearts and minds? Another definition for ruminate, by the way, is when an animal brings something back up that's already been swallowed and continues to chew on it some more, like a cow chewing her cud. And Jesus asks, why are you thinking these things? Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your heart? What are the things in our minds and hearts that keep us from following Christ? What are the things in our minds uh, that, uh, that permit us to continue in sin and justify sin? What are the things that keep us from growing in our love for Christ, from receiving the full forgiveness of our sin? What are the things uh, uh, and reasoning that, that justifies not being a witness for Christ and sharing our faith? What are the things, thoughts, sometimes evil things we entertain in our heart that, can I say it, paralyze our faith and our commitment to Christ? What are these things? What are these things that you entertain in your heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Almighty and gracious God, we give thanks for the witness of St. Peter as recorded by Mark. We give thanks for Peter's faithfulness, but also Mark, who, who recorded these stories about Jesus we give thanks for the faithful example of what Mark calls some people. Oh, God, help us to emulate those people. Help our faith to be tenacious. Help our witness to be tenacious. Uh, help us to, 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 to be strong in, in our faith and in our witness so others might see and believe. 
We ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. so much church for joining us today for those of you online for those of you here thank you so much have a wonderful week remember we're doing the, the super bowl donations this week if you want to drop them off or we'll bring them next week thank you again thank you thank you and we look forward to seeing you again next week and doing this all over again thank you <laughs>